Good morning, and we are so glad you are joining us for worship here at St. Martha's in Pacotia, Nebraska. Please let us know in the comments where you are watching from, and please feel free to post any prayer requests in the comment thread. I invite you to sing the first three verses of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel with us. O oh God, as light comes from these candles, may the blessing of Jesus Christ come to us, warming our hearts and brightening our way. May Christ our Savior bring light into the darkness of this world and to us as we wait for his coming. Amen. Blessed be our God. Forever. Almighty God, to you, to you all hearts are open, open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. An Advent as our song we are saying together the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that. 
us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her, that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill will be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out, and I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arms, arm rules before him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother's sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please read with me uh, in unison Psalm 85. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the Baptist, John the Baptizer, appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him, 
and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather, leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now that we've kicked off Advent and have begun a new liturgical year, we've started working our way through a new gospel, the Gospel of Mark, which we start at the beginning today. Right up front, Mark introduces this strange figure, John, the baptizer, who is clothed in camel's hair, wears a leather belt. Oh, and by the way, he eats locusts and wild honey. Okay then, that's a little TMI, but, but that's okay. It sounds, it sounds a little disturbing, but for some strange reason, all the people are running out to him. Why on earth would you want to do that? It, I'd be a little skeptical, if not scared at first, not only because of the strangeness of the situation, but it's out in the wilderness, for heaven's sake, a place far removed from all that is familiar. As many of you know, I am Mother Emily's husband, and of all the humans and cats in the Schnabelstock home, Mother Emily is the one who feels most at home out in the wilderness. I'm sure she wouldn't mind me sharing with you that she, she loves going outside at any opportunity and going for hikes on nature trails. Our cats think they want to go, but they don't really want to go. I enjoy going out as well, but if it weren't for Emily, except for going running, I would spend all my time basking in the great indoors. <laughs> Many years ago, I flew to Alaska to visit an old running friend who had since turned into a major outdoors person, so much so that he became a climbing guide on Denali, the highest mountain peak in North America. I flew to Anchorage, I was just planning to hang out with him, you know, go for runs here and there. But sure enough, he wanted to take me out on a hike, just a small one, you know, a couple of days and nights, somewhere deep in the mountains, with bears roaming around. No big deal. <laughs> Terrifying. It took his encouragement, instruction, and guiding voice to get me out there to discover this new vast world, to, to actually see a glacier in its deep ethereal green, to hear the, the distant call of wildlife that I'd never heard before and wouldn't have if I had allowed the voice of fear to talk me out of it. In our reading from Isaiah, we hear a lot of voices First of all, we hear the voice of God, speaking comfort to God's people who were living in exile in Babylon in the 6th century BCE, a couple of generations after they'd been taken away from their homeland and the temple, their place of worship that housed the very presence of God but had been destroyed by their captors. Many suffered for their loss of home, of place, 
and identity as a people. While others got a little too comfortable with the Babylonian lifestyle. So we hear heavenly voices instructing Isaiah to be that voice, to go to a mountaintop to announce this good news that God was with them, that this, that it was time to go home, that there was a pathway prepared for them in that great outdoors, that they would have to leave their new normal, a life of exile that had become familiar once again, and to venture out into that desert unknown which brings us back to the gospel. John the baptizer, a voice out in the wilderness, calling people out of their places of familiarity and exile to confess their sins, those things that kept them from seeking the true home in God. For John indeed, in all his strangeness, was that mountain guide he had all the appearances of Elijah that Mark provides, the Old Testament prophet, who for generations was long expected to return to be that voice that would announce the people's deliverance from all that plagued them in the world. Who in your lives has been that voice, that guide, the one who has challenged you, the one who has paved the way for you to discover what you would not have known? And what and who are those voices in our world today, in these times of separation and loss? All those internal, external voices that lead us to fear or seduce us to false hope. In the midst of this Advent season, though, there is that one voice that guide to which we can surely run when we hear it, the one who prepares a path through this wilderness in which we found ourselves, wilderness that is in fact not separation, but a path, a highway that we are walking together even when apart. For as we step out into this new and unknown and discern and follow, the voice that is our guide, we will discover our true home wherever we are, with the one who speaks of comfort and breathes into us new life, so we can discover the beauty on that path that fear had hidden from our eyes, for there we find the presence of God breaking into our life.
gracious God, through your messengers, the prophets, you have called your people to prepare the way of the Lord and to welcome the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Speak tenderly to your people that we may wait for and hasten the coming day, saying mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Indwelling God, you have baptized your church with the Holy Spirit. Inspire us to lead lives of holiness and godliness as we prepare for new heavens and a new earth. That as Christ comes, he finds us to be a people of peace and justice. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Holy and mighty God, open the ears and eyes of the leaders of all the nations that they may listen to what the Lord God is saying. For you are speaking peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Compassionate God, look upon the needs of all humanity. Feed your flock like a shepherd. Gather the lambs in your arms and carry them in your bosom. Gently leading the mother's sheep that all may know the comfort of your strength. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Ever-present God, lift up your voice with power to herald good tidings to the people of this community to cast out all fear as we listen for the happy cry of your coming salvation. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Glorious God, come with might in your divine recompense to reveal your glory to all who look to you in hope, especially those who are ill or in any trouble. Accept our glad tidings for those who offer you their gracious thanksgivings. Bring into your everlasting reign those who have died. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness, Righteousness and peace have kissed each, each other. Look upon your creation and comfort your people, O Holy One. Let every valley be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. Let the uneven ground become level, and the rough places a plain that all people may see the revelation of the glory of God in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. We give thanks for all those gifts that have been received through the week and from the live stream team this morning. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thy kingdom, and of thy kingdom, and of thy And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as ye forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, We're so glad you have joined us this morning. I hope that over the weekend uh, you received a letter from us. If you've not, it will come in the mail this week um, detailing our current financial situation. We give thanks for everyone who has given gifts during this year, but as you know, St. Martha's depends on multiple streams of income and without Sunday morning in-person worship for our own safety and without the rental income, again, most people are not renting spaces out of uh, their own personal safety. Uh, so we are asking you if you can give a little more in this season, that would be greatly appreciated by us. Uh, you can send us a check, you can uh, use PayPal, um, however you can get it to us, it will be greatly appreciated.
May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing Every Valley. Thanks be to God.